Medicine Deconstructed. As you can see, I have a device in my hand and it's an e-cigarette or a vape. Today, I thought we spent a little bit of time at night discussing the e-cigarette. The reason I wanna discuss the e-cigarette is because when you come to my clinic and when you see a pulmonologist, me, I get a lot of questions about the e-cigarette. A lot of my patients smoke and they wanna quit smoking, so they have questions about the e-cigarette. So what exactly is an e-cigarette? Before we get into it, I always like to review the lung. When you take a deep breath in, that air travels down this pipe. As that pipe then breaks up into a right pipe and a left pipe that we call bronchi, and then those bronchi further break down into little bronchioles, which are little pipes surrounded by muscle. Those pipes carry air to a bunch of balloons that we term alveoli stacked on top of one another. If you blow up a balloon, there's lining in that balloon. That lining is where the air from outside interfaces with our insides and our blood vessels. Now, back to the e-cigarette. What is it? Again, e-cigarette is a device that produces an aerosol by heating a liquid that contains a solvent. The reason why this is important is because when you look at the statistics of an e-cigarette and its use, they're mind-boggling. Looking at it from 2010 to 2013 in adults, 1.3% adults used it in 2010. 13% of adults used it in 2013. That was four years ago. Now, upwards of 16% of high school students are using the e-cigarette. In 2013, 263 thousand middle school and high school students were using the e-cigarette and they had never even smoked. So people who aren't even smoking or who have never smoked are using the e-cigarette. Again, one of the things that comes up is people are like, well, I want to use it as a smoking cessation product. Well, this trial was done and they looked at 657 patients and they looked at smoking cessation rates in people who use the e-cigarettes to quit. They didn't quit. They continued to smoke cigarettes. So it's not a smoking cessation product. And when you look at the label, when you buy that vape or that e-cigarette, it actually tells you it's not a smoking cessation product. So again, why does that concern me? Because as a pulmonologist, I'm gonna start seeing these patients. I've got kids who are smoking it just for fun using it just for fun. I've got increased usage over the last several years. And so it's important to talk about the health consequences of using the e-cigarette, especially knowing that it's not a smoking cessation product. So why are there health consequences? Well, let's get into it. So again, remember what I said earlier. I said that the e-cigarette contains a liquid that when it's heated, with this solvent that it's in, it becomes an aerosol. So that's where the consequences start. So some of these liquids and these solvents are propylene glycol, which when heated can become propylene oxide, which is actually a carcinogen. Carcinogen meaning it can cause cancer. There's another molecule called acrolein, which increases airway resistance. What I mean by that is as you inhale that acrolein, which is part of the solvent in here, what can happen is it can cause inflammation in your bronchioles and cause them to constrict down. Remember previously I had talked about asthma. When those bronchioles constrict down, that's obstruction. That increases resistance and that doesn't allow air to escape out of those balloons, which can cause shortness of breath. Again, there are other molecules within here that heat up the liquid. There are metals, there's tin, um, is one of the metals and tin is actually a molecule that can increase inflammation within the lung as well. These nanoparticles of metal can actually deposit themselves in the alveoli and then they can enter the bloodstream. There are lots of diseases that these metals can cause. In fact, in the lung, some of these solvents 
have been noted to cause what we call hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Again, remember, the lung is the only organ in the body that's constantly exposed to the outside environment, and now you're taking the outside environment and concentrating it here, increasing the amount of particles that are in here that you're inhaling. And again, yes, you're gonna increase some of that inflammation within your lung, and you're gonna increase some of the deposition of these metals, which can lead to disease and can lead to shortness of breath. And it's important for people to know that and for people to understand that. And when you think about e-cigarettes and smoking cessation, which is one of the things that they thought it was used for, again, it doesn't really do that. A lot of these companies like to compare the e-cigarette to actually smoking a cigarette, the tobacco cigarette. And I think that's important. And when you look at it from that aspect, yeah, the e-cigarette's positive. But the analogy I like to compare that to is if you have somebody that's injecting heroin through their veins, or you have somebody that's snorting cocaine, if I'm given a choice, yeah, I'd rather have the patient that's snorting cocaine. They don't get the abscesses. They might not get the infected heart valves or the infected bloodstream. But again, if you look at snorting cocaine alone, it's still negative, it's still bad. That's how we have to think about the e-cigarette. Yeah, it's better than tobacco smoke, but it has its own consequences. And it's important to look at these consequences down the line. And it starts with looking at the solvent. It starts with looking at the liquid. It starts with looking at the heated metal that's involved in creating the aerosol. It's important for you, the patient, and for you, to, for you the consumer, to be informed. You have to know the consequences of inhaling this aerosol. I tell my patients, and I feel like you should know too. Thanks for watching Medicine Deconstructed. I appreciate you joining me. Please like and subscribe to my channel, Medicine Deconstructed. I appreciate the comments below. I really use that feedback to create future episodes. Again, remember what I always say, be better today than you were yesterday. Thanks for watching.